Hey everybody, it's Joyce at Shadow by Etero with a little line yacht. And today I wanted to kind of go over a few things. Um, I was going to do a video today on herbs and roots and whatnot and conjure, but I am led to do a different video in a sense. It's basically about things you can use around the house that have properties in it that are used in conjure. And basically, you know, it's a cultural thing, I suppose, because these are things that are just a, a lifestyle for us, really, um, here in the South, in South Louisiana. And I guess we never really looked at it as workings, but actually it is. It's hidden workings, really, uh, what's considered hidden workings, you know. Uh, but really, ultimately, it's our culture and our everyday life, you know. Um, home remedies, you know, things passed on from the old people, from our grandparents, you know, just a way of doing things. You know, and you don't really think a whole lot of that. My hair looks like a hot ass mess, sorry. But anyway, so I just kind of thought it would be interesting to do a video on that and maybe help people that think that they have to go and buy a bunch of different things that really they can't afford or don't have access to when there are things in the home. And this is just a very brief, short little list of remedies, uh, a wives' tales that actually, you know, are believed and used in our lifestyle, in our culture, and it's known to work. You know, it's known to be protective. It's known to be cleansing and clearing. It's known to draw in. It's known to do this. So, anyway, um... First and foremost, and I have all my notes that I wrote down because I didn't want to, you know, forget what I wanted to say. And so petitions are very important. And I know I've spoke about petitions in other videos. But petitions, you know, it tells spirit what you want, what you're asking for, okay? You know, claim it as yours. You know, but you're giving spirit a clear, concise this is what I want, this is what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, you're going to ask and pray for, in your petition, exactly what you want. You want to be to the point to get the job done. If you want, you want a husband or a wife, you can't put, bring me a husband, I'm praying for, or however you want to write your petition, um, bring me a husband, bring me a wife. You have to say, because you'll get what you get, okay? You have to say, bring me a good husband. Bring me a husband who will love me, be faithful to me in our relationship. Bring me a husband that I can grow with, that I can have a healthy relationship with, a healthy love. Um, a strong marriage, um, friendship, you know, just different things, you know, someone who will always be good to me and kind, you know, someone who is respectful of people, you know, selfless, someone who is a good provider, someone, you know, just you, whatever it is that you want, you know, for you. You know, if you have a certain belief system, someone who practices this, blah, blah, blah. Someone who believes this way, blah, blah, blah. Someone who fits in, you know, I want a wife, I want a husband to fit into my lifestyle and be good to me and kind to me and, you know, raise children with me and be my partner in life in every way, be fair. Um, someone non-violent, you know, just 
things of that nature you want to specify you know um, if you want a job you know just um, I want a job no I want a job in the medical field I want a job as a nurse I want a job as a doctor I want a job as a dentist or you get what I'm saying you know you have to be a little specific but make it to the point of what you want don't beat around the bush and don't be ridiculous about it oh he's got to be six four and a half point dot in height his weight has to be such and such his eyes have to be one green one blue you know one earlobe hanging lower than the other don't be ridiculous because then you're gonna wait a while okay <laughs> like a while <laughs> But and it sounds maybe ridiculous me even saying that, but you would not believe the shit people do ask for. And it is a little bit, um, you know, it, it's ridiculous. You, you can't do that you, and think you're going to, it's just, you're not going to get it. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to just tell you, you're going to be ridiculous about it. I'm sorry. You know, you got to be realistic. And what you want okay if you want to do money workings and you write your petition I want a million dollars by the end of the week well unless you hit that powerball which the odds are not a whole lot in your favor I'm not gonna say it's impossible nothing's impossible but be realistic about what you're asking for okay all right so Hidden works in, in conjure household items, remedies, wives' tales. Um, so I have my notes. Like I said, we talked about the petitions. Um, and I know I talked in about jar workings yesterday. And I'm going to touch on a couple of those things too. Not to say jar workings, but like say, okay, ammonia the ammonia jars okay ammonia is good for the reversal workings but it's also a good cleanser and it's good to strip away things that are blocking you okay it's good as a purifier um vinegar vinegar removes things you know vinegar is a good cleaner all right I've used it just on its own. Some people put salt. Some people put lemon juice with it. Um, I've used it by itself with water. Not pure vinegar, but vinegar and water and cleaned. And I mean, it's fine. It really does a great job on windows and glass. I will say that. You know, um, but it cuts, okay? And it it really does it helps cut and clear like you know jinxes bad luck um that kind of a thing black coffee is good to speed up works and it's also good for removing energies on you that people may around you if you're you know out and about a lot you work with the public um you can do a bath with coffee black coffee and water and you can strip all that negative choo choo I call it choo choo the negative energies off of you brown liquid Lysol is good to clean your home with um, a lot of people don't like the smell I'm not crazy about the smell of it however it does work well um, to cleanse and it's good to cleanse and protect all right Murphy's oil soap now I do use that a lot I use that to clean my house I clean the wood in my house with that I clean my floors with that Murphy's oil soap has lemongrass oil in it okay and I love <laughs> I love the smell of it I just really like it and it's a good and it's also Lemongrass oil is a main ingredient, the main ingredient in Van Van oil, okay? So, it's good for, to cleanse your home, for a business, for protection, peace, to keep things running smooth. Um, 
cuts and clears, blocks. I say it gets rid of all negativity. That's my belief in it, you know, and it's a protectant. It cleanses and it protects. I love the stuff myself. I really do. I, buy, I have two bottles of that right now, as a matter of fact. Brooms, good for spiritual sweeping. You know, sweeping out those negative energies, not back and forth, but those long, just pushing it out forward, okay? If you sweep behind someone, that's to uh, ensure that they won't come back to your house when someone's leaving and you sweep behind them out. You don't want them back at your house. Chances are they're not going to come back, okay? Um, we believe you put you can put a small broom over your entryway, over your door, okay? And that's supposed to protect from the evil eye entering, all right? If you put your broom with the head up, okay, that's supposed to protect you from the evil eye. I believe it. I believe it's true. You know, there's no right or wrong. I could take anything, you know, that I feel has certain properties that can help me and put all my faith and belief and trust in that. And it is. Okay. Also, something else with the brooms. If you, there's two different things now I've always heard. If you sweep over somebody's feet with a broom, it means you'll never get married. Okay. And also, if you sweep over someone's feet with a broom, it could bring the law to you unless you spit on the broom. Okay. The only way to prevent that is to spit on the broom. Otherwise, you could, it'll bring the law to you. So, to prevent the law coming to you, spit on the broom. <laughs> but, so, you know, that's two different things that were told, you know, about the brooms as far as to sweep over the feet, you know, and you can sweep out your negative energies with the broom, sweep behind someone so they don't come back, just like throwing salt behind somebody when they leave. You could do both and make damn sure they're not going to come back. You know, that kind of a thing. You know, it's how we believe. All right. Nails. Okay. Nails are good to, you know, protect, to nail a person or situation down for healing works. That's, nails are good for that. Rusty nails are good for that. Um... They say rusty nails are the best, but me, myself, it's a rare day that I have an available rusty nail for myself. So, you know, I get what I have access to. There's only so much I could find in my old, old grandpa shed. <laughs> so, I use safety pins and needles. That is true in candle workings. Um... Safety pins and needles can be used in many different ways. Marking a candle for the days you're going to burn it. You can mark your places, you know, with a straight needle. Okay, you can mark your days that the candle's being burned. Use it on poppets or voodoo dolls for positive or negative workings. Um, it nails someone down. You can use it for that. You can use it in healing. Um... To nail down an illness, to be able to remove it, like to pin it down, to pin it, to get it, know what it is, and remove it. Salt, of course, salt is can bless and curse. Um, for us, I know in my family, um, as far as cursing i wouldn't say cursing but to protect us from what we feel is evil you know preventative medicine here <laughs> you know cleansing and uh protection is mainly what we have always used it for in my family you know and 
I've always looked at it as, I mean, it is a very powerful protectant. It's a very powerful cleanser. You can add it, you know, you can surround all your works with it for added protection. Um, there's so many ways you can use so many things, you know, truly, truly in jar workings, different types of jar workings, you use salt, you use pepper, you use different types of peppers for different types of workings, you know, and it's, I mean, it's really sky's the limit, you guys. I mean, it really is. But this is just a general idea. Um, it is simple stuff, but do not be fooled by its simplicity, okay? Or you can get yourself hurt. <laughs> so I always know, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, all right never do that don't ever underestimate people or things okay because you might get more than what you bargained for in that now in speaking i wanted to mention about different workings um you know, when you're using, when you're doing some type of a negative working, um, a removal type working, let's say you want to get, make somebody just get away from you. Okay. There are some things you can do. Some are not as harsh, I want to say, as others, but. Be careful when you do these workings because if they do a reversal, if they do a return to sender, you can get it right back on you. It'll knock your ass out. You know, it'll throw you for a loop. You do any type of negative works, <clears throat> please protect yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Always make sure you're protecting yourself, but keep in mind... <clears throat> You see, I can't speak all of a sudden. Keep in mind someone may be a practitioner or know someone that can help them. Um, but in any case, the work can be sent back to you. So always ground yourself and protect because you want to make sure that's not going to happen, okay? If you know this person is a practitioner, there are steps you can take in your workings before you actually do the work that you want to set out to do. You can make it to where that practitioner cannot see who is doing the work on them. They won't ever be able to know who did it. And so if you do know that someone you're going to do works on practices you really need to make sure not only that you protect yourself in your area that you do works to make that person blind to who it is doing it so they cannot see you you are absolutely invisible to them okay so just it's still they could still do a return to sender. That's what you really have to be careful Okay Scissors all right cuts away uh, Any works against you cuts away cross conditions illness used to protect your home from anything um, That people try to bring into it You know that kind of a thing Vix vapor rub we always just call it Vic Salve. Um, but there was a tree tour many years ago here that when this lady would treat people, she would use, and I noticed that a lot of old people, you know, when I was a young girl, used a lot of Vic Salve, like a lot. <laughs> but they claim it did the trick, no matter what it was, you know, that it was just this awesome thing. I keep 
my big salve you know i have jars of it here i like it you know especially if i'm ill i like big salve but um this treater she would take a little dab of big salve and she would cross you wherever she felt compelled to for whatever ailment you know ailment ailment or illness that you had she would cross you with a dab of Vic salve on a certain area of your body and pray over you and that's how she treated okay and it would work that was what she used just a little little dab of Vic salve okay you know and I mean what works you do you know you use what works you do what works it doesn't matter what other people think you know it could be the simplest thing okay and if they don't believe it then guess what it's not going to work for them it works for you Indian fire you know I had that when I was a young kid I had it on my back and it's some kind of a bacteria or virus or something and I'm not exactly sure how I got it. It was never explained to me how I got it. I'm not sure if they even know how I got it. But I was a young kid and I had it, you know, on my back shoulder blade. Very bad. I don't think there is a good spot for Indian fire. And it makes this huge, like a scab, okay? And what it is, it's like it's feeding. It's like it grows bigger and bigger, the cure for Indian fire from the old people and it worked for mine it got rid of it was for seven days you fan you get fanned by a cabinet door seven times every day for seven days so it'd be you know seven fannings with a cabinet door for seven days straight and that got rid of the Indian fire on my back. Um, you know, it's just little things like that. Boils. A blessed wedding band. And you put it in the area where the head of the boil is. And you gently circle. You know, not hard, but just gently. And it gets rid of the boil. You know and I also think I want to say they did that for ring ring worms too I want to say they would do that with you know for a ringworm if you had a ringworm on you that they would take a blessed wedding ring or wedding band and circle it and the ringworm would go away so there's just different you know different things um, turpentine gets rid of ringworm, tapeworm, pinworm, um, and it's supposed to be a dose once a year with sugar and water. Now, I never got that. My grandma would give it to her children when they were young. My mother never wanted to give that to us because you're not supposed to drink turpentine <laughs> and I don't guess she gave them a lot like a drop maybe you know but that was to kind of rid them of like a pinworm um, that kind of a deal and that was how all the old people would you know they would treat they would do um, I remember my grandma warming Vic salve up just a little bit over a fire over the stove a gas stove just to get it a little warm because if we had the croup you know in our chest we had the croup and they would rub it on our chest as kids put a towel and then we had to sleep with a vaporizer you know right next to us you know and she would watch us during the night that we could breathe and I mean it helped you know, or if you really bat off, you got it on the chest and on the back, the upper back, with towels to hold it in, hold in the heat with the vaporizer. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, we did all that stuff, you know. 
You don't hear of people doing that anymore. No, it's just a part of our culture. Everything what I've just said, or that's just a very short list of different things, workings, remedies, um, old wives' tales that are a part of conjure that for me is just culture, you know. And I just thought it was interesting, you know, I thought it'd be something interesting to share also and... You know, if you have any comments or anything to add to that, you know, if you want to share any type of practice, you know, any type of cultural practices, remedies, oh, wives' tales that you guys have, please leave it in the comments below. Email me. You know, I would love to see and hear what people have to say about it. You know, give me those comments. I would love to hear what you guys got to say. So, thank you again for your time. I will see you soon. It is a busy Thanksgiving week. <laughs> so I know you guys are really eyeballs with different things going on with the family and blah, blah, blah. I know we are here. So I will catch, catch you guys later and have a good night. All right. Thanks. Bye.